Hello, everyone. I'm Griffin. I'm doing a live stream today <laughs> from a hotel room. Uh, this this will be a fun broadcast because I very quickly set up a bunch of things in my hotel room that I'm testing out. Uh, so I'd love today to set up a Fresnel that I've never used onto an Aperture 300D light and bring you along for the ride. Um, so hopefully, if I clicked everything correctly, I'm streaming on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. Maybe someone can uh, tell me if this is true, if I'm actually broadcasting right now. Let's see, here are my comments. Let's see if I'm actually going. Oh, it sure looks like I'm going, yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I see uh, Red Boy Vlogcast is here. Thanks for coming, Matt. Uh, he says live on YouTube. So what's funny is normally in these live streams, this is the third one I've done now. I do a little like opening screen with like a recap from the last episode. Um, but I'm in on Pacific time right now. I'm in Los Angeles and uh, I just didn't have a lot of time this morning to pull everything together. So like I set up all these lights. <laughs> Let me cut to these lights. Uh, I set up a bunch of lights in this this hotel room, and by the time I did all of that, I really didn't have time to produce a, a full episode. So none of the bells and whistles today, just um, just me and my hotel room in Los Angeles and some lights that we can go through together. And I'd love to take your questions along the way. This will probably go for about 45 minutes, and then what I want to do is, one of the reasons I'm doing this right now is... The recount where I work is doing a live stream, their first Twitch live stream. This is my third Twitch stream, and the recount's doing their first today at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, if you're in Central Time. Uh, they're doing their first stream. It's it's a podcast that they produce already at the recount called The Long Game with LZ and Leach, Will Leach and LZ Granderson, two very smart guys who talk about sports and politics. And they have a podcast, which they're going to record as they normally do, but they're going to do it in New York and in front of a Twitch audience. Might as well, you get, you get to see all their all their outtakes and everything. Um, so that's going to start at the end of this hour. And so I figure I'll just raid right into that. If you are new to Twitch, if you're watching on YouTube right now, maybe you don't know what a raid is. A raid is where you... I can, I can ask all of you if you'd like to come with me to this other channel. I don't think you have to. I think it pops up a little message that says, would you like to jump over there? Uh, I'm going to watch that at the end of this hour, so I encourage you to. Don't feel like you have to as a personal <laughs> favor to me. Maybe you want to click over just to ride the raid and see what that's like if you're on Twitch. Um, but I'll give you the heads up now for the people that are watching on YouTube. If you have a Twitch account, if you want a Twitch account, uh, maybe sometime in the next hour you could you could set one up and... and take j jump on the raid with us <laughs> i see that eric fakardzada is here on twitch good to see you eric uh crash landon is here good to see you and jacques slade is on youtube says welcome to la thank you yeah i uh i y you should check out my instagram if you want to see what i wear in the airport. I was double masking, putting a face shield on. Uh, I have a bunch of trips. I was just in Dallas last week. I'm in LA this week, and I'm going to to New York next week. Uh, and I'm trying not to get sick along the way. So uh, trying to trying to stay safe. So let's talk about what we're here to talk about today. This Fresnel that I've never uh, that I've never used before. In fact, I'm curious to know in the comments how many of you have used a Fresnel before. I had only heard this term when I was in high school and we have lights that look like this in the theater and people called them Fresnels and I didn't really know what that meant and I still barely understand uh, what it means because I am not a spotlight guy. As you can see in this, this wide shot here uh, overlooking me, I have set up two soft boxes. These are aperture light domes. Um, I love a nice soft light, a nice big light. I actually have two here. You might wonder why I have two lights going. But that's because uh, I 
well, let's go to my let's go to my wide shot here. I have LA behind me right now, and it is very bright out there. And I figured the only way I could even show this to you without it being completely blown out, and actually it is it is still blown out, but you can make out some detail back there. Uh, I have a six stop ND on my uh, 25 millimeter prime lens right now. I have this, I have it all the way open at f1.4 and it's set to ISO 400, uh, but I had to knock it down six times, six stops, meaning like, I don't even know how many that is. That's two, uh, a half reduction in light, then a quarter, then an eighth, then a 16th, then a 32nd, then a 64th. So a six stop filter is a 1 64th of the light is coming through right now uh, to, to hit this F1.4 lens. So I need a lot of light to counteract that. And these, I have these two, these are Aperture 300D lights. These are all lights that I've rented for a shoot that I'm uh, doing while I'm here. And I don't really need them necessarily for this live stream, but I, I have them here. So I pulled them into my room, turn them up to their, actually one of them is not even turned up to its full brightness. It's turned up to 86%. The other one, the second one is turned up to 100%. Um, but the 300Ds are relatively bright, but they're not as bright as the 600Ds that Aperture makes. So just to get more light on me, I, I found that one of these was not good enough and I had two and I, had, I happened to have two light domes. So I set the second one up as well. Eric says that he may have in college, can't remember for sure, used a Fresnel, yeah. Um, so my point being, I, I like nice soft light. You know, I'm not gonna put a spotlight on myself right now. Um, even with this relatively soft light, I probably could have put it a little bit off to one side to get more shadows coming one way. I kind of don't like the very on me light, um, but that's what I have set up here. Uh, that's always the challenge in a, in a hotel room is there's just not a lot of space in here. One thing I always hate in a hotel room is the beds are so tall. <laughs> so if I try to set up a shoot where I'm sitting like anywhere near the bed, I mean, there's not that much space for me to be in this hotel room. You always have a bed that's like, feels like it's six feet up on camera. It's, I mean, it's like four feet up. Um, it's funny because they, when I checked in, they said, they said, you are a Marriott Gold member. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'd like to give you an upgrade on your room. And I was like, ooh, maybe they'll give me a bigger room. But this is exactly the same room I had last time. I think they just put me up on the 11th floor, so I guess I can I, I can see more, which is nice for this shot, I suppose, that you can see the green of, of Los Angeles behind me. Um, but I'm, I'm not very familiar with Fresnel's, and we rented one because we may want to do some interesting background effects in one of our interviews. So I want to set this up on the Aperture 300D, walk you through it, and show you what it does. And I'd love to hear your, your comments along the way. So let me go to the wide shot. And I'll, I'll show you how this Aperture sets up. If you've never used one of these lights, these Aperture... Uh, I really like the Aperture lights. They're generally not super expensive to buy and they're a little bit cheaper to rent of course uh, everything i have here i rented so uh, rentals are usually like four to ten percent of the total price tag um, so if you've never rented anything it's a great way to try out some gear i'll show you how the aperture is always set up they're all kind of the same i have 120 d's at home and i have i just got some amarin 200 x lights which are kind of like a cheaper build quality. These are nice and metal, so are the 120Ds. Anything with the Aperture name seems to be strong metal construction. And then they started making these plastic ones that say Amarin on them. Uh, and so I got the Amarin ones because I actually like that they're a little bit lighter. Um, but all these lights are, the, are pretty much the same. The 120D, the, the 300D. Now I'm just in the way of my light. I should, or my camera, I should come over here. Um, so they all have these little, Cables. I don't even know what they're called. They kind of look like XLR cables that run from the light to the controller box. And the controller box is bigger depending on the, the light model you're getting. The one on the 120D is not that big. It's pretty big on the 300D. And I've actually never used the 600D. I just assume it has a giant box to control it. I also think, correct me if I'm wrong, that um, 
the 300 must refer to like a watt equivalency. It's the output. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely in the model name to represent the output. And I assume it's like wattage. They saw, these all have this little plastic cover. They don't want you to touch the COB, which let's see if I can remember what that stands for. Anyone remember what COB stands for? It's the LED. It's like a, it's, it's a packed full of LEDs. Let's see if anyone knows. Uh, yeah, Shannon D is asking, what is the wattage on these lights? Like I said, I assume this is 300. Uh, Eric says that I'd be happy that he's having Sriracha on his lunch, but ashamed it's not the original Sriracha. That's okay. I am in the land of Sriracha right now. You know, if I'm going to click over to the uh, chat split screen, I should sit down <laughs> and be in the shot. Um, let's go back to this. So one thing... They say no touching the, the surface of the COB. And I've always heard, this is what I'd always heard in high school, is that you shouldn't touch these things because you'll get your oils from your fingers on the uh, right on there. It'll heat up real fast. It could boil and blow the glass, which I don't know if that's still the case with an LED-powered COB versus like a very, very hot light. But they obviously put this here for a reason, so I'm not going to touch it. Now... This is a Bowens mount light, so you can put modifiers on it, like these light domes. These have just Bowen mounts, and they just stick on here and pop on. These also have, uh, what do they call them? Reflectors that they come with. Let's actually look at what this looks like on the wall with the reflector. Very crowded in this hotel room. Okay, so let me bring this box up for you to see. Did I plug in everything? No, last thing I have to plug in is the box itself needs power here on the bottom from the wall, and that just pops in. Um, there's other ways to control these, like DMX controllers, which I'm not very familiar with. Uh, you can also put a V-mount battery on these things. So there's there's lots of options here. Oops, there, it's on, and now it's off. Um, so here we go. It is on 30% power right now, and this is a single color, this is a daylight colored light. One of these, just it just so happens what I rented, I this one on the right is a 300D, and this one on the left is a 300X, which is their bi-color one. And it's hard to tell in the live stream, but I actually have this one is just its normal color, which I imagine is 6,500 Kelvin sunlight. And then over here, I think I have this one set to 4,900. So I'm actually getting like a slightly warmer light out of this one because uh, it can. These ones, if I want to change their color, I need to use a gel because um, this is 6,500 Kelvin, I believe. And then it could be 6,000. I can't remember exactly what it is. I could turn this all the way up to 100. But you'll notice if I'm trying to do some special effect on the background, this kind of just throws a bunch of light. It doesn't give me the opportunity to, you know, I would need barn doors to maybe try to close this in a little bit. But even then, you can see there's a lot of spread on this that's hard to control the light that comes out of the reflector. And that's where a Fresnel comes in that... The Fresnel should give us more control over where the light goes, the edges. Um, so let's pop that on and see what that looks like. Fade to Unforgiven on YouTube says, Oh, Fresnel, I thought you meant you were testing the flannel on a hotel room. <laughs> Fresnel is a weird word. Anyone know where it comes from? I, I don't. I, I mean, I assume it's a French word. Uh, but I don't know. Oh, and thank you, Eric. Uh, COB, I forgot what that meant. It's chip on board. Um, but chip on board, COB is the, the terminology they use for this kind of LED light. It's not like an LED panel. I, I don't exactly understand the technology, but it's like they cram them all in, and that's a COB, which is better for approximating a spotlight effect. Like, let me go to this shot, uh, and let me go stand in the shot. Which, yeah, you can see I'm getting very hard shadows on the background. Uh, 
which is like the sun. The sun is such a, I guess he probably can't hear me as well, and I'm on the other side of the room, but the, the sun, even though it's massive, even though it can fit a million Earths inside, the, the sun is a tiny source in the sky, and so it creates those very hard shadows. Um, this softbox that I'm using is the same light, but it's got these big diffusers on it. And now, like, where are my shadows? Here on the wall, but they're, they're much softer because uh, the light is coming from a large source. The larger you can make your source of light, the softer the shadows are, the more diffused it looks, which is generally more flattering. That, that's probably what you want on people, unless you're going for fashion photography and you want hard shadows. But one of my tricks is, you know, I always like to use a big source when I can. And if I don't have a big soft box, what I'll do is I'll take a bright light like this and let's show this. You know, instead of pointing it at my subject, which might be over on that side of the room, I could loosen up this thing on the side here and tilt this up. I could now throw this light onto the ceiling. And if you look up there, what's reflecting off the ceiling becomes a giant source. So that's like, I mean, it's like a reflector. It's like a big soft box on the ceiling. Um, you'll get shadows, you know, below, um, you know, downward facing shadows, but they'll be pretty soft. What I actually like to do, I don't usually bounce off the ceiling unless I'm just trying to fill the room with more light. I might, you know, let's say there's a white wall next to me. I might point this at the wall and let it bounce off the white wall. And then my subject can stand on the other side of this light and receive that big source of light. Um, so that's kind of my, my go-to trick for doing a, a soft light in a, in a place where I don't have soft boxes. It's just take a bright light, point it at a white wall, let it spread off the wall and it'll come back and hit, um, hit, hit your subject in, in, on the face. Let's see what else you guys are saying. Eric says, I've seen bulbs explode before for that reason, for, you know, letting the little <laughs> finger oils, uh, boil on the surface of the bulb. So yeah, it happens. And M3 Lucky123 is wondering, how do I travel with all my equipment weight-wise? Do you have a cart? Also, do you use a media pass when traveling via airports? Yes. Let me grab my media pass that I made. And I'll show you the case that I'm using too. And then we'll pop this Fresnel on. Let me turn this thing off for a moment. Tight room. So you can see that I have some giant bags. These are the bags that I rented. Let me bring the stuff that I traveled with. I can make it over this. <laughs> okay. Here's the backpack I travel with. Um, when I went to Dallas last week, I, I put all my cameras and microphones inside this. Uh, for this trip, I did something a little bit different and I'll show you, but while I have this bag here, I'll pull out my media badge that I made myself. And I rarely ever need, if you actually are in the media and cover events, you'll find that generally they want to credential you themselves. Like if you go to a, a Donald Trump campaign event or a PGA tour event, they'll probably ask you who you are they'll give you your own badge that says PGA on it or something. Very rarely does this actually like get you in anywhere. You know, you're not going to like walk up to an event and be like, hello, I'm press. Please let me in. I mean, maybe good to have something like this, but to your point, who was that had that question from M lucky one, two, three on YouTube. This is handy at the airport. Well, that's one reason I put it right here in my bag in case I needed it. I don't usually need it. Um, not usually in the U S if I'm traveling internationally, I might need a press, uh, badge to prove that I'm media and should get the media rate for baggage. Um, sometimes they charge, they charge overage fees or, or weight fees if you're over 50 pounds. And sometimes those weight requirements are worse overseas I've found, especially in Asia. So, um, sometimes I needed to tell them that I was pressed to get, to get a better rate. 
Um, also, I'm, I was flying United on this trip, and I don't usually fly United. I don't have status with them. So I thought, you know, in case they give me trouble about one of my bags being too heavy, uh, it's good to have that. And you can just make your own press badge. I mean, this one is, it says the recount on it, but I made this. Uh, it's just its just like the one that I designed for myself. Um, and I, I really like the ones that are like a card, a hard card, instead of like a laminated piece of um, paper. This, I think I just made this with a company called customlanyard.net or it might be custom lanyards.net. And if you look it up on my podcast, if you go to hey.film, I have a podcast episode about making a press pass. And the first company I went to, I think maybe it was Vistaprint, gave me trouble about this. I, you know, I made this design, asked them to print it. And they said, oh no, we can't print you an official document like that. It's like a media pass is not an official document. It like, especially in the US, the First Amendment says anyone can be press. So, like, <laughs> it's not like the government determines who is the media. Uh, so uh, how are you going to tell me I can't make my own media pass? Of course I can. Uh, news organizations do it all the time. I mean, if you go to when I worked at Bloomberg Television, they make their own media badges. It's not like they're given them from the city of New York or something. So I just thought that was funny. And you you should you should make one um, just just for those those moments when you might need one. Uh, to further answer your question about how do I pack uh, this trip with all this stuff that I have, pretty much everything you see in the shot right now was rented from Sammy's camera. Uh, I rented, we rented lights, soft boxes, these Fresnels we're going to talk about, and uh, and lots of C stands and tripods, or uh, not tripods, but C stands and and uh, and light stands. But then I brought all the cameras, and so. This is what I've been traveling with recently, is this Pelican Air case. It's the size of a suitcase, so it fits in an overhead compartment. Um, you can carry it onto the plane. I like carrying this on because it's full of my cameras and lenses, and I just don't want to check that. I want to know that I have them. And it's just a big segmented case. You can actually, uh, what I like about these Pelican Air cases is that you can cut these. Oops, I'm going to drop something. You can cut these dividers to whatever shape you want uh, and they are pretty lightweight and so i'm able to get you know because my cameras are relatively small i'm traveling with a gh5s here and two this gh5 mark ii and the gh5 mark ii that i'm shooting into right now or, or looking into right now those are my three cameras for the shoots that i'm working on here i have a 35 to 100 millimeter lens i have two of these packed in here um I only brought four lenses. The lens on this camera right now is the 25 millimeter prime, the F14 from Lumix. And this lens is an 8 to 18, which I love this lens because it's, uh, you know, tight. It's like a pretty normal portrait. And then wide, it's just like ultra wide. It's really fun. Uh, perfect for, for this scenario right here. Um, so this this works for me, but I actually this I didn't have to bring very much on this trip. It was just a carry on Pelican case, a backpack on my back, and then because all this big stuff was going to be going to be rented. I mean, that's what I love about coming to LA. There's there's plenty of rental places to choose from, and uh, I don't want to travel with a bunch of light stands. And I seem to do bigger shoots in LA too that require all this stuff. Uh, when I went to Dallas last week. Uh, I was actually working with a photographer and I knew that she had some light stands. So I said, I'll bring microphones, cameras, all the things I need, my gimbal. Um, maybe I'll even bring a drone. And But I don't need to travel with light stands because I know you have a whole bunch. So that was helpful for me. Oh, here we go. Had attack on YouTube came in with the great answer about where Fresnel comes from. Uh, I'll hold up a Fresnel while we're talking about it. So... The inventor of the Fresnel lens is called Augustin Jean Fresnel. I mean, that's his name. Uh, therefore, that's the name of this thing. Thank you for 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 inventing this, Mister Fresnel. Uh, Hat Attack also says I like to bounce from the wall. Also, I mean, it's just such an easy free trick uh, as long as your walls are not weird colors. Uh, and if I have a spotlight mount, I can cut it to the shape of the wall. Yeah. So that's kind of what we're talking about here is um, is using a Fresnel as a spotlight mount to, uh, to to control the shape a little bit more that we're getting. So let me show you how we do that. Oh, and my friend Matt Fry's here. Hi, Matt. 
who says, I'll take one Griffin Hammond media pass, please. Join the team. Join the Griffin Hammond <laughs> live stream team. That would actually be like a fun perk. Uh, like if I if I did that kind of thing, if I if I like monetized, you know, you're a you're you're a platinum subscriber to the Griffin Hammond live stream and you get the Griffin Hammond media badge. <laughs> Okay, so let's get this for now. Oh, it looks so cool from the back. It looks like it looks like a wheel that would be on a car. Um, and there's two pieces of glass inside this thing. You're seeing the little one here in the back, and then it spreads the light into this front part, this front element. And this thing is a Bowens mount. You can tell from the three uh, little notches. And so that will replace this hyper reflector that's on right now. Let me turn this back on so you can see this one more time, what it looks like just straight out of the reflector. And I'm at 100% on this thing. Let's turn it off. And then pop off the reflector. I think it's actually kind of fun doing like a setup video on Twitch and on YouTube. Like I started to set up this light and I was like, wait, no, don't set it up in advance. Just let's do it live. That'll be more fun. This thing is really heavy, by the way. I feel like I'm going to break it. I mean, it's a huge piece of glass, and it's all metal. Actually, maybe this is plastic. It's hard to tell. It feels most of it's metal. And I like Bowen's mount, but they're always a little bit difficult for me to get. I feel like I need a third hand to twist it just right. Okay. So now the Fresnel is on. This is called the Fresnel F10, or the F10 Fresnel by Aperture. And... Let's turn this on. And it looks almost the same, but I think you can see that the edges are a little less soft. Um, so it's, it's, it is more of a focused light that's coming out. And what you can do, and we're not done because we're also going to add barn doors to this to really shape it. Um, you can turn this whole thing and it changes the angle of the spot here. It should be getting smaller, I think. Let's see. Yeah. It's getting smaller, smaller, smaller. It actually just kind of looks like it's getting more like hot in the middle. Middle of the shot. But yeah, we can make it a little bit smaller. And then so it's not like a like a super hard shadow here. Um, and then let me let me show you the last part. We'll add the barn doors on. So let's see. Oh, these barn doors are giant. Also, let me show you the uh, the case that the Fresnel comes in. Oh, I got two of these Fresnels, so this one's actually has is full right now. Looks like a little drum bag. In fact, I was in the elevator and someone saw this and they were like, "Oh, you're drumming." <laughs> in your in your hotel room um, but it has lots of padding inside because you know the glass on both ends so it's kind of like a giant lens case and then this is the giant barn door system for the the fresnel it's funny aperture has barn doors that go on the reflectors and they're like a quarter of this size i mean they're pretty much the same thing but this is giant because it's got to go on top of that entire um for now. Hey, Johnny Boz is here. Welcome. Johnny, we are talking about this, uh, the barn doors I'm about to add onto this Fresnel light. Let me cut to that camera. I'm using two cam links today to, to show you two different camera angles. And we've added this Fresnel adapter. It's a Bowens mount onto this Aperture 300D. Uh, it's operating at full power right now. It's very bright for a hotel room. I have a three stop ND filter on this lens um, and now let me turn this off so i can add the, the barn doors on these things don't actually get all that hot um, as leds but if they get hot enough i should keep them off i don't want to blind myself and i probably could point this back to the camera a little bit and you can see what's going on so i'm going to turn this again to close it down a little bit to, to actually open up the angle more so there's these four little little holders, and this there's one of them that moves like this, so you can twist it out of the way. And then this whole barn door system 
can slide in. Slides into three of them and then use the fourth one to lock it up. Oops, I did it backwards. There we go. Now it's in. Now I'll turn it back around. <laughs> this, I love the 8 to 18 millimeter lens because it's like when I turn this, it looks so distortedly huge. Well, that's a cool shot. Let's turn on the light. Let's shine it right at the camera. Whoa. <laughs> that around. You know, I said this thing doesn't get all that hot, um, but as soon as I turn it on, it has kind of like a heat sink inside. If you look right down in here, you can just see a bunch of, uh, just a bunch of metal sheets, the heat sink. And then if you look on the bottom, it's two fans. Um, the smaller lights, like the 120D, I think I have one fan. But this 300D has two fans on the bottom that are blowing air up to help all of that move out. And yeah, I mean, the moment you turn this thing on, it's it's pretty, there's some warmth coming out of there. Okay. So now, let's try to move this thing. So what I can do here is I can really close this down if I want. Oh, yeah, I can just turn these barn doors, too. But you can see, that's kind of cool. Um, and I know from experience that using the barn doors on the reflector that come with these lights, I would not be able to achieve that level of precision uh, on the shape back there, um, that it would be a little bit softer. So the Fresnel helps focus the light and give me a little bit more control over the the shapes and the patterns that I may want to throw into a background or something. Um, so this is my first time using this. And so I'm thinking when I go set up this shoot that I'm working on here, I could play around with, I have two of these if I want, I could play around with some weird lighting effects on the background if I want. We should also throw a gel in there and see what that looks like. But I also want to catch up with the chat real quick and say that we have about 12 more minutes of this live stream. And then, like I said earlier, I really want to jump do a raid onto the recount channel. Um, so if you're on YouTube, this stream will end around the uh, the start of the hour. And then if you're on Twitch, if you want to come with me, I'm going to go watch the new, uh, the recount, the company that I work for, their first stream on Twitch. Uh, they're doing a, a sports talk show. Let's see. What else are you all saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Johnny says, are you drumming, man, with my drum bag? <laughs> Uh, Kevin Hawthorne is here on YouTube. Says good afternoon from Lakeland, Florida. Uh, <laughs> Rock sixty wants to know when all the actors are coming in. Yeah, I got I got quite the setup here. I need. <laughs> it's just me, just me. All this for me. And uh, let's see. Uh, Balance Zero says FYI, the F10 Fresnel is designed to be used on the 600D light. I know. Yeah. Um, for the 300X lights, the smaller Fresnel 2X can be used. Yeah, this is kind of one of the funny things about renting is, like, I asked them for very specific lights. They're actually out of some of the lights that I was asking for. So they gave me different lights, but then they still gave me this giant Fresnel that's not even made for this light. And so I was like, well, that's what I have. Um, but, um, oh, it's funny. We got uh, we got some spam comments coming in on YouTube. Yay. Uh <laughs> But um, so yeah, I, I couldn't get exactly exactly the uh, the equipment I wanted. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm guessing I would get a different. I might get a different fall off effect if I put this on the 600D. It's not made for this for this light. And what other comments did I miss here? Let me scroll down a little bit more. Actually, I've never done this. I've never like had to get rid of spam. Subnetwork on Twitch says that's how you know you made it when the spam comes in. Uh, let's see if does restream give me any options. Yeah, I can block user on YouTube. I can also put user in a timeout on YouTube. Uh, let's see what happens if I block. I can block them, but I don't think it. Um, I don't know if it changes my my feed though. Um, and Eric says, oh, by the way, are you still selling one or two of those 120Ds? I am. Um, if you're interested, Eric, I I'd love to sell them to you. 
um, cause I have, I now have five lights at home and I don't, I only need three. Uh, I have three 120 D's, which are very nice lights. And then I have two slightly more powerful 200 X lights, which are also bicolor, which I like, but the trade-off is they are not as nice in terms of build quality. The 120 D's are these, are just like these 300 D lights. They're very strong metal. And then the 200 X is a plastic light, but it's, it's great. But that's why I need to get rid of one, two 120 D's if you'd, if you'd like them. All right, we got a few more minutes. So let's see, the one thing I wanna do here is I wanna add a gel to this. I don't have a gel holder for this Fresnel, um, but I could throw one in there, see what it looks like. Oh, wait, the gels, oh no, my gels are in my suitcase, yeah. I got too much here. Yeah, let's see. Ooh, really hard shadows. So I'll show you these gels that I travel with. They're super cheap and also very easy to uh, to travel with. Um, I have this Roscoe Color Effects kit, which is just like it's like twenty different colors, and some of my favorite colors are just like this blue. Um, there's also like kind of an emeraldy green that I really like. So let's pull that one out if I can find it. Um, yeah, this is it. It's like not evergreen. It's like kind of a blue green. Uh, and I really love the way this, this color looks. And then I also have just this Lee filters, uh, daylight tungsten pack. So these are CTO gels, uh, which is color temperature, orange gels. I believe that's what that stands for. And they come in full CTO, half CTO, quarter CTO, whatever. Um, and I don't know the calculations, but it's like it's like a full CTO moves you, I think, from like 3,200 Kelvin. Well, it'd be the other way around. Take like a daylight light, like a 6,500 Kelvin light. And then a full CTO, I believe, brings it down to like 35 or 3,200. Like pretty much takes you from daylight to incandescent. Uh, and then a half CTO brings you halfway there. Um, but good for matching lights. Like I told you that I have this light right here is a single color. It's a daylight colored bulb. And then this is a 300 X light from aperture. So it's a bicolor led. So if I wanted to do something in the yellow range, 5,000 Kelvin or 3,500 Kelvin or something, I could use some gels to make this one match that one. Uh, that'd be a good use case for that. So let's see what happens if I try to throw like a green gel in here and let's see if there's a creative way for me to do it without a uh, without a gel holder i mean what i always do is just take like some gaff tape and um, well i feel like I feel like maybe i could stick it in here now if i can work but let me just get some uh some tape and throw it on here where oh i have some tape right here i always have like a big gaff tape roll that I keep in my suitcase. And then I always have these little tiny gaff tape rolls. This one's actually getting near the end here. Um, but this is easier to carry around. And when I'm lazy, I'll just use gaff tape to put a gel right on a, right onto a light. Or <laughs> the other thing I'll do that's real lazy is if I run out of, uh, step up rings like right now i have a step up i have a couple step up rings holding the nd filter onto that lens um, but if i don't have them with me i'll just tape them on okay let's put this gel on and i don't know how hot this light gets i mean generally gels are not supposed to melt but they can melt so you know, I probably don't want to put it all the way against the, the Fresnel necessarily, um, where it could melt. So what I may do is I may just tape it to the barn doors. And then it's kind of far away, but I bet I'll still get, I think I can still cover most of this light. Let's see if that works. Mm. 
I'm really crammed into this corner here in this hotel room. I can barely see what I'm doing. All right, I didn't do that perfectly. You can see there's some, some white light leaking out the top. But this is kind of a good test to see, like, hmm, do I like that look? I mean, actually, that's kind of interesting. I do like this color a lot. It's kind of like, it's blue, but not blue. It's a little green. Kind of emerald. Close this down a little bit more and see. I always think it's funny, though, to, like, have this much power out of a light and then close it down that much. <laughs> It's like how much light are you just you're just wasting? You're not you're not it's not going anywhere. All right, we have a few minutes left, so I want to see uh, what comments we are getting on Twitch. Eric says, "Oh, by the way, Griffin. Oh yeah, I already answered that. Uh, you are interested in my lights." Um, Aaron Mull says, "Hey, Griffin, did you fix that audio delay in OBS? I don't have a delay when I stream, but when I record, I do. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so I figured out that." I probably always had, and uh, it wasn't the the audio wasn't delayed. It was actually the video that was delayed. The audio was ahead. Uh, I figured out that it wasn't happening because of the the various monitors and things I was plugged into. I think I always get some delay coming out of the camera into a cam link into OBS, and the audio just comes in faster. So I solved it by. Uh, you could do it in OBS. You can just go to the advanced audio properties and add a delay. Live, we added a 300 millisecond delay in that episode, and it seemed to fix it. Uh, after that episode, I decided I should probably do this before it ever gets into OBS. I have some other things I need to do with Audio Hijack. So I set up Audio Hijack to fix this audio. I mean, hopefully it sounds okay. Um, it's, it's coming into Audio Hijack. It's adding a compressor and a limiter. It's taking the left channel and duplicating it to the right channel. And then it's also delaying at 300 milliseconds. And then it sends it out to OBS, which is using it for the stream. Um, and the reason I like doing it in Audio Hijack is because I realized I was probably getting that audio sync problem everywhere that I was using my nice camera plugged in to a cam link, uh, you know, in a Zoom call, in a Google Meet meeting, everywhere. So it's nice to solve it outside of OBS if I can. Uh, oh, my friend Nalani's here, unfocused in IA, uh, <laughs> sending me all sorts of cool hype <laughs> emotes, or I don't know, they're not emotes, they're, what are they called? I don't know, I don't know, know the lingo on Twitch. I'm not cool enough yet. Um, let's see, uh, Anup uh, Adhikari is here on YouTube, said, hey Griffin, it's midnight here in Nepal, and I want to thank you with your documentary course and watching your content. I made my first documentary. That's great. That's exactly why I try to put out into the world uh, these tutorials and and classes, because I, I think that documentary filmmaking can be very accessible to people. I don't think you need to wait for the perfect gear to come along, and you can go out and start shooting right now. So I'm glad to hear you did that. Um, oh, Unfocused loves the teal. Let's go back to my teal shot. Ooh, <laughs> let's widen it out a little bit. Let's get a little bit more on the wall. Uh oh <laughs> So that's the Fresnel in action. For anyone joining us late, we have the uh, Aperture 300D light going. Uh, as one of our commenters pointed out, it's the wrong light for this Fresnel. It's supposed to be the 600D, but uh, this is what Sammy's rented me. Uh, you'll also notice that I'm, I don't have any grids on these soft boxes. I wish that I had the 30 degree grids that they come with. Uh, Sammy's appears to have lost them. So they, they rented these to me without the, the grids, unfortunately. Uh, Thank you for emailing me, Eric. Yeah, I'll let you know about these lights. Um, uh, Nilani, unfocused NIA, says, I sound awesome. Thank you, Nilani. Uh, and Aaron is talking about the advanced audio properties. Yeah, it's um, like if you looked at an OBS at your audio mixer, there's a little gear next to every audio source, and there's advanced audio properties, and one of them is delay. Um, and you can also adjust the volume in there and do some other things. Dustin is also watching. Uh that's great. I love my friend Dustin, also in Iowa. And Nalani says, yes, it's called emotes. <laughs> Johnny also says emotes. Thank you both. Uh, Johnny and and, uh, and Nalani are both, their names rhyme. They don't know each other. Uh, they're both they're both great streamers. You should check out their channels, Johnny Boz and Unfocused in IA. Uh, Nalani, Unfocused in IA, is a, is a wonderful singer. And Johnny is just a really smart, 
tech video guy, uh, knows a lot about video games, and is also just naturally talented at speaking in a stream. I'll, I'll say that. Um, let's see. James is here from... Where, where are you, James? In the UK, your golden pigeon. Powerful gear for a hotel room, he says. Uh, and Aaron says he just bought a new light for his upcoming shoot, renting a... a uh, Renting a cam on Borrow Lenses, the website, yeah. I bet Sammy's is so fun to go through while in L.A. Yeah, I like renting for Sammy's. I'm just used to it. I know where it is. I know how to drive to it. Uh, they always have the stuff I want. Uh, well, this time, not everything. Usually, though, I rent, like, more expensive lights, but they, they have all this aperture gear, and so I've been trying to rent aperture stuff because I like it. Uh, <laughs> Eric says Sammy's is slack, and it sounds like... I will say, I'm here for several days renting this stuff for, uh, for multiple days, so it may just be that... They didn't, you know, someone else had it checked out already. It was also a pretty last minute rental. It was like, we rented it yesterday to be picked up yesterday, which is the case sometimes. Okay, I want to see if the recount has gone live yet. Let me check. Uh, maybe if anyone else wants to look on Twitch, you can tell me. Uh, if they're live, I want to try doing a raid over there. Um, the reason I want to do this is... This is the company I work for, and this is their first Twitch stream, and so I thought it'd be fun. I'm going to watch, and if anyone wants to come with me on the raid to their channel, that'd be great. Uh, you also don't have to stay. You could just uh, experience the raid and then and then drop off if uh, sports are not your thing. This is a show about sports from two really smart guys, uh, Elsie Granderson and Will Leach. Let's see. I figured it'd be smarter to not try to look at Twitch on my computer while I'm doing this, but try to look at it on my phone, but I'm actually pretty slow here. Let's see. The recount on Twitch. The recount. It requires that I can spell it so I can type correctly. They do appear to be live, so let's uh, let's see. I'm gonna do my first uh, my first raid, and then I'm gonna drop off. So for those of you on YouTube, the stream is gonna end shortly, and for those of you on Twitch, uh, if you want to come over to the recount, and if you're on any other platform and you just want to see what I'm talking about, just go to twitch.tv slash the recount. And I think all I have to do is type in, let's see if I can do it from restream. What I type, what is it? Slash raid? The recount? Let's see if this works. Just do it to Twitch. Did it work? I don't know. It worked. <laughs> all right. I'll see you all over there. Thank you so much for watching.